Good morning and welcome to this podcast on the second Sunday before Advent. I'm Karen Hutchinson, Archdeacon of Norwich and Warden of Readers. As we begin, I invite you to still yourselves, maybe to light a candle, and to become aware that God is present with you in this moment. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess, and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It feels to me as though Advent has come early this year. Advent, the season of waiting, of looking forward to something that is to come. A season that is meant to be a pause, a preparation before we enter into the joy of celebrating Christmas. That's the theory, but in practice Advent is usually rather full of carol services and Christmas parties a very busy time when it's difficult to get a sense of a season of waiting. But this year, the season of waiting began in the first week of November as we went back into lockdown and public services in church buildings have been paused. Much of November is being spent waiting, preparing perhaps for the things we hope we'll do in a few weeks' time and in the longer term, waiting for a much longed for vaccine. Our reading this morning is a story that Jesus told about a period of waiting. In the case of his listeners, they had been waiting for many hundreds of years for God's kingdom to be restored, for the Hebrew people to be vindicated. This reading comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, beginning at verse 14. Jesus said, For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. 
Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When we hear this story, we tend to jump quickly to the conclusion that the man in the story who goes on a journey is God and we must be the slaves, to be praised or criticised according to our performance. We can get quite hung up on the words of the last slave and wonder who wants to serve a God who is harsh and exploitative. It's a far cry from the generous and loving God that we see pictured elsewhere in the Gospels. But parables are not allegories in which every aspect of the story has to be like something else. Some parables are told for the opposite effect, saying, If you do this for an earthly master, think how you would respond as disciples of a generous God. The last slave in the story is paralysed by fear. What might it be like if instead we were motivated and inspired by love? Jesus told this parable in the context of his deteriorating relationship with the religious establishment. Chapter 23 of Matthew's Gospel contains his harsh words of condemnation of the scribes and Pharisees for locking people out of the kingdom of heaven. And this parable too could be interpreted as part of that criticism. God had entrusted his people with the law, the prophets and the temple. But what had they done with those treasures? Had they effectively buried them in the ground? Had they turned the command to be a light to the nations into an encouragement to keep the light all to themselves? We too have been given rich resources in our faith. We have scripture, our traditions, glorious buildings and rich liturgical resources. We have our individual experience of a loving God, of a faith that sustains us. All those are wonderful gifts with which we are entrusted. But what do we do with these great gifts? Are we willing to offer them to others, to take risks? Or do we hug them possessively to ourselves, protected from anything that might threaten them? That begins to sound a little like the man who buried his talent to keep it safe. He preserved it intact and unchanging, but it was no use to anyone. As we endure the time of waiting that is upon us this year, 
how will we make use of the gift of each day? We could wait, like the third slave in the parable, just marking time, expecting at some point in the future simply to dig up our old lives and go back to business as usual. Or the waiting could be purposeful and productive. When the Archbishop of Canterbury's Middle East envoy, Terry Waite, was held as a hostage in solitary confinement, he didn't know that his waiting was to last nearly five years. But he passed his days recalling prayers and scripture and composing poems in his head. Some of those poems made it to print when he was eventually released and contain deep theological reflection that even now bear fruit and bless other people. He described the kingdom of God as embedded in the depths of soul, and he explored that kingdom during his waiting. Could we use our waiting time to explore the kingdom of God, to be open to change and new possibilities, to grow in our discipleship. In the company of Christ, each day can become an adventure, whatever our circumstances. And so we come now to our time of prayer. Loving God, we come before you today in our times of waiting. Give us patience and purpose, we pray, that we might use this time to grow in faith, hope and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and its leaders, for guidance in a turbulent world, we pray for those involved in our health services at this challenging time and for those working hard to produce a vaccine. In troubled places, we pray that you will turn the hearts of all from violence and hatred to peace and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are mourning, sick or in any kind of need. May they know your loving presence today. Give us compassion and wisdom to know how to help where we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those whose company, whether online or in person, has brought us light and life this week. And we pray for those who are lonely. We pray for the many community groups and churches in their work with those living alone. Inspire them and us to serve the people around us day by day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the land, that even though our buildings are closed to services together, we may still be united in spirit as we worship each in our own homes. In this diocese, we pray for our bishops, Graham, Alan and Jonathan, our clergy and lay leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that we may rise to meet the challenges of the week ahead. May we be an encouragement to others and a witness to your love for this world and its people. And together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you and with all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>